Mm -hmm. Make sure I share out this live. I have to get you a theme song. I know. I do need a theme song. I think I know somebody who. I think I can get you a theme song. <laughs> yes. My theme song right now. Yeah, let's do a theme song. Okay. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Show. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, good evening, everybody. That is my new opening song for the Pandemic Proof Singer Series. That's what you're watching right now. I have a really, really special guest with me tonight. I'm so excited. I'll introduce her in just a moment, but um, I'm Danielle Tucker. I am the singer vocal coach. I'm one of the lead singers for the Mighty Untouchables band. Uh, I'm also the creator of a brand new digital course called I'm With The Band. And this is a really, really fun course for lead singers. Um, please check that out at don'tbethatsinger.com after you watch our episode tonight. So if you've been wondering uh, how to move forward in your career in, uh, in an unprecedented worldwide crisis in such a time as this, then you're in the right place because my guest and I are here to spread encouragement and not germs. So st strap in, buckle your seatbelts. I'm going to introduce someone who I have mentioned on the show literally dozens of times. She's a very, very special friend of mine. She's all the way from the East Coast in Rhode Island. This is Eden Castile. She is a wonderful multifaceted performer, pianist, singer, producer. She's an independent studio owner um, from Wakefield, Rhode Island. Uh, you, your career, you started out as an opera singer um, and you moonlighted and show choir. And then uh, over the years, you've kind of gone from classical performing into more jazzy cabaret, musical theater, um, and you teach all three of those. Um, you have your Bachelor's of Music from the University of Cincinnati College, Conservatory of Music, and your Master's of Music degree from the University of Maryland. So you are smarty pants. And um, I know you from several organizations that we're a part of. One of is what called NATS, which is the National Association of Teachers of Singing. And you were the um, chapter president uh, in Rhode Island um, up until this year, right? Right. Yeah. And we also, um, we really became friends in a cohort group for um, independent studio owners called SACO, which stands for the Speak Easy Cooperative. What is the O? That's it. The co-op. Okay. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, I hope Michelle doesn't watch this. <laughs> anyway, this group that we're a part of is unbelievable. I have to plug it really quick because it is for independent um, and, and academic uh, teachers as well in the voice field. And it has been a life changer for me, total game changer um, as far as how I run my uh, vocal business. But back to Eden. Eden, um, there are so many things that I want to talk to you about tonight. But I think the thing I'd really, really love to start with is uh, your vocal studio because um, you are doing some incredibly innovative and creative things with your students. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about some of the projects that you have done in quarantine and the ones that you kind of have in the works? Well, like every other music studio owner, whether you're a group or a single person, uh, when March hit, everything changed, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I had lots of plans for my students. Um, many of my students are, are active performers, but a lot of them are not professional performers. They're, you know, high amateur, and they've uh, performed in community theater, regional theater, they're singer-songwriters, they're high schoolers who are destined to be performing majors in college, things like that. But all of them are looking for more performing opportunities. So that's what my studio specializes in. And we create them in the studio and online and in local venues and slightly more far flung. But the idea is to, to keep you performing or to get you to perform more frequently than you have so far. Uh, so when the pandemic hit, all of that came to a screeching halt. 
including my own performing. I was in a show that had exactly eight performances. It was supposed to have about 30 and it just slammed shut. Yeah. So, um, so I know how I felt about that experience and I knew my students were feeling that too. And I had several um, showcases planned at local music venues. I had all these ideas that we were gonna have uh, small groups of people come to the, the home studio. I have a big living room where we do happy hours and uh, we all get together and sing. We had all these performing plans, all gone. What do we do? We moved everything online. Mm -hmm. So like everybody else, we started with Zoom and I had a, a showcase planned for June and we turned it into an album instead, an online album. That was the first one I'd ever done. I don't know how to make an album, but thanks to Google, I learned how to make an album. <laughs> so I think my students were expecting that it would just be lessons online and then it would kind of just be that or maybe we would get together and uh, sing for each other and do what, what Zoom would allow us to do. Mm -hmm. um, but that wasn't something that I felt was going to benefit my particular students. Uh, if it's great for your students, great. And I saw some great Zoom recitals, some great, um, you know, kind of what I would call one way where the students mm -hmm. are performing out. Right. But I was looking for something that was a little more interactive and something that would allow them to focus on something other than just having to talk to the Zoom camera. Because I think like everybody else, it got really fatiguing really fast. Mm hmm so I thought, well, if I could just turn off the Zoom, I thought, well, if I turn off the Zoom, it's just audio. What's audio? A record. Yeah. So, so we called the album, we, me, I called it Six Feet from Stardom as a takeoff of the movie 20 Feet from Stardom about the backup mm -hmm. singers. Yes. And I had 13 of my students participate. So most of them were ones who were going to be doing the online event, but a few surprised me and they were really excited. Mm -hmm. Everybody did a cover. And the only requirement was that the song had to be happy, humorous, or hopeful. Nothing sad, nothing angry. I just wasn't in the mood. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think any of us are. <laughs> so they had a little time to decide what they wanted to sing. And we talked about it in Zoom meetings and in groups. Mm -hmm. And they, they settled on a song. I created a piano demo track, just straight piano, did it right here, sent that out. And then we started creating custom arrangements. I used uh, Logic Pro X for the first time <laughs> to create mm. arrangements. I'd never used it before, yeah. but I found it fairly easy. And I actually um, paid a couple of friends to give me some, some quick tutorials on it. But it was fairly intuitive and I was able to put together something. Would I have loved to have taken a year to do it? Of course, yeah. uh, but I gave myself about eight weeks. Mm. So it was a very intense eight weeks. So the students then got their kind of half completed demo tracks. I had two um, master classes with different people to talk about how to actually sing into a microphone since that was a new experience for many of them. But that went back to what I wanted them to do anyway, which was to learn mm -hmm. how to be more professional, how to perform more in a variety of situations. So as the pro project went on, I realized, oh, this actually hits a lot of the things I want them to, to focus on anyway. Mm -hmm. And as they sang more and more on this, just this one song over and over again, uh, they said, I'm just able to go deeper onto it. I hear myself differently when I record yeah. it this way and I listen to it because it's going to wind up being an audio track, not a visual. So it was a really uh, positive experience uh, for all of them. And some of them heard some things that they, they realized, oh, I didn't realize I was flat on that note. Yeah. So, but I can fix yeah. it because I can go over it 20 times. So they came to my house in early June, one at a time, safely distanced, windows open, me masked, and they recorded their parts safely and then I mixed it and put it all together and it went out on SoundCloud oh my so. gosh that was so cool it was amazing I I got the opportunity to kind of watch this whole process unfold and I was just so impressed and just as a friend proud of you for you know taking this on but also just how innovative you were for your students you know this opportunity to perform had been kind of ripped right out from underneath them and you you found a way and it was extremely unique um but it wasn't a, a far-fetched thing that you know they're not going to be able to use in the future you you brought them into an element of music that um normal voice lessons you wouldn't be getting this so they learned the creation of an album process i mean that had to be incredible for all of them. I would say it's a definite amateur album. I mean, the kind of people Danielle Tucker gets to talk to go into bigger studios than this room, but it was still valuable. 
And what's really cool is the technology exists for mm -hmm. any of us to do this. Yeah. Right? It's, it seems like, oh, well, I could never do that. Yeah, you could. Mm -hmm. And if it interests you at all, try it. Yeah. Try it to whatever level you feel comfortable. So I started with simply having them record on their phones. To, to, in order to get in, they had to send me a, just a video of them singing to audition yeah. just to prove that they wanted to do it, that they were brave enough to stand there and sing and do a video. Yeah. It also kind of let me know where their technological capabilities were. Mm-hmm. I had students who were, some had a home studio, basically. Most were barely above singing onto their phone. So for them, it was a major investment to sing with headphones in. But that mm -hmm. was fine. We were able to work within it. When they actually recorded with me, we were all at a certain level. Mm -hmm. So I was able to get some consistency, which was great. And 201, they all said, this is so much fun. Yeah. I haven't had this much fun since the lockdown began. Yeah. And it was joyful to get to see them and talk with them. So. Mm -hmm. I think just what we learned from the process is that even though this is a time when we're being told about all the things we cannot do in order to stay safe, there are so many things you can do mm -hmm. as a performer, as an instructor, as a coach, you know, whatever you're doing in music, there is still so much you can do. Keep your eyes open. Mm -hmm. Be willing to try things. You don't have to try it, you know, all at once. I did it like as a pilot with one student first, just to see if I send these tracks, can they actually do it? And then I realized, oh, I could actually extrapolate that to a bigger group of people. Yeah, that's incredible. I think it's so amazing how you took the whole concept of putting an album together. I mean, if you you put that in, you put that idea in front of a, a, a seasoned professional, and that's a daunting consideration. Um, but the way you just removed the fear factor in that for them, and these are probably students who maybe thought never considered that they would do a project like that. And you just opened up this door to show them, you know, that you can do it. And I think you're just an amazing example because you are scrappy. And I love that you just, if you want to do something, you figure it out. <laughs> and I think that is incredible. They're so, so, so lucky to have you. And you're so positive too. I, you have a wonderful attitude. Um, Tell me what you have on the horizon now. What what direction is your studio going in? Over the summer, we did uh, some meetings outside in my backyard where it was safe. I had a songwriter from L.A. named Casey Cook. She's originally from here, now based in L.A. She came home to visit her folks, and I've had her uh, do several different songwriting seminars. So it was a thrill to have her uh, when she was back home. And she worked on songwriting with whoever mm -hmm. was interested. Um, like I said, I have students from about high school age. Most of my students are active adults. I have some seniors. They all came because they wanted to practice that skill, and she yeah. made it so easy and fun. So uh, I had her. I had some mini concerts in my backyard. I have a nice deck. So it was safe for us to be outside. We're allowed to have up to 15 people right now in the state okay. of Maryland. Uh, 15, uh, they sat down, they stayed masked, and the band stayed masked. And the singers got to go up with, um, it was me on piano, I hired a bassist and a drummer, and they got to just practice getting up and singing in front of people. I told my neighbors about it. I couldn't invite my neighbors because I could only have 15 or less. Yeah. I was so bummed about that. We were at like 50 and then all of a sudden went down. Yeah. They, could, they could watch from their decks though. They could. They could. <laughs> and it was also my way of saying, don't be mad at me if it's a little loud. It wasn't very loud. It was fine. Uh, and I hired uh, my friend Tish, who's a jazz singer, to come in and coach them. So that way it was just another person kind of talking with them. And they mm -hmm. did that. We called it Sing for Your Supper. And people brought a little bit of food, and it was really enjoyable. So we try to make all that learning as enjoyable as possible. Uh, the Rhode Island summers are really pretty. It's already starting to get cooler here. We cool down, you know, slowly but steadily. So now I'm figuring out what I can do for as long as I can. So I've lined mm -hmm. up another songwriter uh, who's going to work online because he prefers that, a music improv person to be outside. And I just announced that my students are going to do another album, or I invite my students to do another album. And actually, it's open to more than my students. It's a holiday album. So mm -hmm. right now, it has the great title, the ECMS Holiday Album. Uh, but it's holiday tunes. And this time, we are writing. No covers. So all of that songwriting that we have been doing since the pandemic, and I see a lot of songwriters writing some really great stuff. My students are writing as well. And I've noticed that the quality is really interesting and yeah. they are coming up with stuff they're so creative 
So I wanted to give a platform for that. So they have to do an audition again and make a video. Uh, but everybody who participates will also participate in the writing. And then we will record in November. I'll mix in November and we will release it in December. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. Yeah, that's a, and that is an important thing to note that um, you know, while a lot of your students are you know local to you, um, we're in this amazing time period where you can, if if you have it dialed in online, then you can pull students from anywhere. So anyone out there that is interested in participating in um, this project, uh, I'll make sure that Eden's contact information is fully available to you if you want to hit her up and see what is going on with that. Um, and speaking of songwriting, you just wrote a song and put a video out on YouTube. Um, tell us about that. Oh, it was my silly project for a rainy weekend. So I was it's called the Online Music Blues, and I have a YouTube channel, so I put it up on there. But I am a my personality is like learner. Let's learn stuff, right? Yeah. And as soon as I learn it, I want to share it with everybody. So watch out when I start learning about nuclear fission, right? I mean, God. Um, but right now it's all about music. So I learned some songwriting skills and I realized that it's as hard as you need to make it, right? Mm -hmm. I have been making it too hard. So I started writing down it and paying more attention to anything that came into my head because that's what all of these songwriting coaches taught us. Pay mm -hmm. attention to the phrases that come in, the melodies come in and write them down. So I was watching a Facebook thing and people were being really negative about online music and about how hard it is to connect and how, you know, there, it was just so negative. And I just started writing down a few things about it. Like basically sit down, shut up, <laughs> plug in, it's going to be okay. And here are all the things that go wrong. That's true. But this is our best option. And I wrote down kind of cute, you know, rhymey versions of that. And I realized, oh, these are actually song lyrics. So I started turning them into that. I thought, what's the easiest possible form I can think of where I can bang this out before I have to go make dinner? Oh, blues. Music <laughs> <So. laughs> blues. And then the next day it was raining. You know, I had my coffee. So I sat there with, with Logic and I found a beat and I just made a really quick arrangement. I just, you know, world stupid is vocal. And then I realized, oh, I should make a video. I know how to use Final Cut Pro. Okay. So I thought, why not? So I thought, well, if I sit here by myself, I'll feel miserable. So let me ask all my friends to do it. So I found a few clips of my students being online, my, my funniest students. I have one who always puts up the coolest virtual backgrounds. So, and I've taken a few bits of video. So I asked him if that was okay, threw him in, and then asked in a few Facebook groups, hey, if you want to send me 30 seconds of video of you hating online music, I'll put it in. And they all mm -hmm. did. They all did. And so it made it really easy just to string all that together. And then I released it. <laughs> and it's hilarious. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's and something that everybody really needs to know about you is that you're a master wordsmith. I mean, you just, you have these ideas on the fly that would take me a week to even <laughs> get a crumb of the creative, you know, just phrasing that you come up with. Um, that's a, that's really incredible. Um, before we move to um, some other YouTube videos that you've done, and I will post that video in the comments as well, so everybody knows, I just want to give a shout out to our friends that are joining us online. Um, Liz Jackson Hearns is out there. Hey, Liz, thanks for watching. Amy Cool, Jessica Fielder. Hey, Jessica. Yes. And, um, Hmm. W.F. Mikowski. Hi, W.F. Hey, W.F. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> so on to the other YouTube videos. You have been involved in some really, really important experimentation. Um, and this is in the realm of high fidelity, low latency platforms. Um, I never even realized any of these things existed until uh, COVID hit. And then those things started, um, you know, entering my world. And then we attended the Nats conference um, a couple of months ago. And um, there was some amazing information kind of brought to light and shared with everybody. Um, and you really dove deep into this and you you kind of set out on your own and started doing some experimentation with some other um 
singers, musicians um, in in the area. So um, tell me, like, what what compelled you to jump right into that? Oh, like I said, I love to learn everything. Yeah. Right. And everything I learn, I share. Mm -hmm. So um, I had actually looked at it like five years ago. So I live in a, mm -hmm. I, I was living in a really coastal part of Rhode Island. I'm in Southern Rhode Island and I couldn't get students to come to my house. It was just a bridge too far because I just lived too far away from everything. So I thought, well, I'll go online. And like everybody else, I asked that one question, was well, it possible to really play and, and, and sing online in real time? And very quickly I found out it wasn't. So I started looking around, well, has anybody figured this out? Do I have to buy some expensive a piece of equipment? Could I do it? Mm -hmm. And I found a couple of things that kind of promised to do it. And I began to look into it. And again, this was like five or six years ago that I looked into it, but nothing really seemed to pan out for me. So I just was on my merry way and I was doing Zoom lessons years ago before the pandemic hit. Uh, then, when it hit, everybody kept on asking themselves the same question. Oh, my gosh, mm -hmm. how can we do it? And everybody was asking that same question. And so I started looking into it again and thought, well, has it gotten any better? It has. So actually, I could have answered the question better five or six years ago. This technology has been around for a decade or more to do really low latency um, uh, music online. Mm -hmm. Is it perfect? No. Not one of them is completely perfect, but each of them have something that's worth evaluating and exploring if that's an interest of yours. I completely understand that for some musicians, no, they do not want to touch it. That's fine. If what you're doing is working for you, keep doing it. But I think over the next period of time, however this year goes, there's going to be more people who would like to begin to explore the edges of what's possible. And that's definitely me. If I could have it my way, tomorrow I would be giving concerts with 50 other people and we would be streaming it, you know, everywhere in the world, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for how close can I get to that right now without bankrupting myself, right? Yeah. So that's what made me want to do it. It was purely selfish, Danielle. It was, I want to perform. It had nothing to do with students. It was, mm -hmm. But I also knew my students could benefit right? Mm -hmm. So if I went looking around, I figured then whatever I learned may benefit some of the students who also want to do that, who want to do more performing. And I found some other musicians who were already using it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that, that made me create those videos. Um, uh, Wendy Jones is our friend from Speakeasy Cooperative. She is a jazz professor and a private studio owner in North Carolina. And then Amy uh, Stewart is a jazz professor at Texas Christian in uh, Fort Worth. So first I worked with Wendy and we decided to try out these things we had heard from our mutual friend, Ian Howell, who is a professor at New England Conservatory and he has really been the leader for this. And we should uh, definitely link his website. Yes. He has several white papers about uh, low latency, about using this technology in the, in the music studio. He's been really helpful. So he lays out everything that you would need. And there is you know, some technical skill involved, but not as much as you think you'd need. Mm -hmm. So Wendy and I began to read that. And then we talked to each other and said, hey, would you like to try this out? I've been looking for months for other musicians to try things out with. I, mm -hmm. and, and in April, I tried out one program with David Sabella, who is a um, cabaret singer in New York. And he was very kind. He helped me work on a piano program called Internet MIDI. And we had some success with that. But then after I had that initial success, then like, how do I get more people to do it, right? Yeah. So it's 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 like figuring out there's been a miracle and how do you evangelize? <laughs> right. How do I convince you, right? There needs to be another miracle. So Wendy and I decided we would try out uh, what was a sound jack, which is another one we had heard about and we had heard Ian talking about it. And Ian had put up a couple of demonstrations of specifically classical stuff. Mm -hmm. and Wendy and I wondered, well, would it work on jazz or pop? Let's try it with jazz or pop. And it did. So we were able to, uh, I was able to play for her and she was able to hear me and we were able to jam as if we were in the same room. Yeah. And you were states away. States away. I think yeah. she said something like 883 miles away from me. Yeah. It's really incredible. I'm going to make sure that I, of course, post those videos. You get to watch the experimentation for yourself and see um, the results that, um, that you got. Um, 
sound jack i know there's several that you have worked with so far um is sound jack one that you're recommending is it one that you're sticking with or what would you say is your top platform that you're using the most right now i'm half and half so uh sound jack is very stable sound jack has a ton of technical support from its makers in germany and it is being used in colleges or any place where uh, music schools that need to have that distance and that low latency because you can um, amp it up to, to many different servers. It's so basically, it's a peer-to-peer. -peer. So instead of having to go up and then bounce down again, it's a connection uh, between. So, and it doesn't require tremendous um, upgrading of equipment to make it happen. So Soundjack is great. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one that I like for different reasons is Jam Kazam. So Jamkazam was the one that I tried out five or six years ago. And I thought, this is great, mm -hmm. but it's just not working. As it turned out, I was checking it out right at the time they had decided to stop updating it. Updating it. Mm. And they were letting the program kind of dwindle down. So I was, I was hitting it right at the wrong time. Uh, but then apparently, like around March or April of the, pan April of the pandemic, the uh, Jamkazam folks decided to start updating again. Thank mm -hmm. goodness. Jamkazam's a little more user-friendly. And they just... It's like having different kinds of dating apps. Mm -hmm. It depends on what you want to date. So Soundjack yeah. is for the academic. And Soundjack is for people who want a little more anonymity. So you can put down whatever name you want there. Your photo doesn't necessarily show up unless you want it to. Just the entire interface of it is just a little more subdued. Jam Kazam mm -hmm. is let's party. Yeah. And yeah. they really want you to be social. They want you to fill out a profile about yourself, what kind of music you like. Right. It's like dating. Mm -hmm. So, uh, And then you can create rooms inside Jam Kazam and say, hey, come into my room and jam. So the most recent one I did was with a clarinetist in Barcelona. And I just got on Jam Kazam one morning and he was there. And so we had a lovely conversation and he said, what do you want to do? And he said, do you know anything from the real book? I said, yeah, I got the real on my phone right here. And so we did Moonlight Serenade. And it was so much fun. And it was like having him in the room. Yeah. So the, the fun part is that you get to collaborate with people you would never, ever get to collaborate with otherwise. Mm -hmm. So I recommend testing both. See which one you yeah. can get on easier. I was able to connect with Soundjack easier at Jam because that took me a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. uh, I had to make sure that the settings inside my computer were right. I had to uh, make sure that my router was figured, configured correctly. Uh, but now that I'm on it, I really like it. Mm -hmm. So I go back and forth between the two. Yeah. Now, what would you say is, what are the entry level things, gear, um, technology, know-how that someone just stepping into this would need to know? Okay. Uh, headphones. All right. And I've got my little in-ear monitors right here. But uh, you want close back or to open back headphones. That's it. Not close back. Uh, you do not want to have headphones that have a microphone attached to them because then it's going to actually create a little bit of an echo. So that's why I have this lovely mic here. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to have a computer that can process uh, fairly quickly, uh, but the system can work on a computer that's five years old, five or less. It's really, really good. Uh, if your computer is older and you can't upgrade right now or it took you three months to get a computer like it took me three months to get this one, <laughs> you can buy a little small, basically, booster. It's called a Fast Music Box, and it's basically just a really small little processor. Uh, one of the trade names is Raspberry Pi, P-I. And if you have kids who are into computers or you know kids who are into, like, making little computers, they've been making these for years. Hmm. It's a way to make a little mini computer. But you can attach it to your, um, your own system, and it lets you speed everything up. So headphones, um, a nice mic with a mixer is going to make the experience much better. And then you have to have an Ethernet connection, absolutely. Right. So going direct to your router. Yeah, as fast yeah. as you can. If you are able to, you can port your router, port forwarding your router, which means that basically you're opening up a connection between uh, your computer and uh, whatever program you're using. Anybody who does gaming already does this. Mm -hmm. I haven't done it for musicians yet, but it's basically the same thing. Again, all of this takes a little bit of technical know-how. In a, I, I said this on another podcast one time, in a plane crash, the person with the knife and the Band-Aid becomes the doctor. And the person, you know, with a knife also becomes the chef, right? 
So basically anybody who has a little bit of knowledge becomes the leader. That's me. Mm -hmm. I have a little bit of knowledge, but on Mr. Google, there's a whole lot of knowledge about how to do all of these steps. And that is mm -hmm. how I have learned everything I have done since this pandemic began, is I go on Google and I look up, how do I do that? How do I do that? Or I go ask somebody and they're really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're interested in upgrading the technology to try to get lower latency specifically for music, you should look at what Ian Howell has published on his own website. Mm -hmm. For each of these programs, there are tutorials online. Soundjack yes. has some lovely ones. And I had to watch them, I think, three or four times before it made sense. And they had a whole mm -hmm. list of frequently asked questions. And I actually have that printed out so that way I can refer back to it. Jam Kazam also has a whole bunch of videos. You know, you, you sit in the forums, you basically educate yourself. But mm -hmm. we had to do all of that anyway when we were learning every other part of our job. So this is just part of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think that um, it would be great to just keep in mind that something jumping into technology right now, I think people are getting a little tired of having to, uh, you know, learn another thing, um, especially if you're not technology oriented, I guess. But I think the important thing to keep in mind with something like this is that it's okay to just experiment. You know, you don't, it doesn't have to be a slam dunk for you the first time that you use it. But if you can find, um, you know, find one of your musician friends or um, just somebody who wants to do a little experimentation with you, you don't have to go on uh, by yourself and meet a stranger and do that. You can if that's your jam. But. <laughs> But um, just going on and giving it a try, um, Eden has been incredibly generous with um, her time and the information that she's learned. She has posted these videos. Um, she she volunteered some of her time to teach um, some of the teachers in our cohort. Um, I got to uh, have a an online session with you, and it was so reassuring because just to sit down and do a little experimentation, you realize, wow, this is this is not it's not as scary as I think it is. And, and I can see that, it, you know, it takes a little going back and forth and, you know, a couple of um, adjustments. Um, but, but when you really give it a shot and you think forward the, the possibility that is at our fingertips is really, really incredible. And it's not just the low latency stuff. So you've also experimented with some um, high fidelity programs too. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, as far as I mean, uh, clean feed, I think is a little bit of a higher fidelity program. Mm -hmm. so, uh, let's face it, zoom is wonderful lifeboat, but it is one of many, many options available to us. Mm -hmm. And if you're a working musician, and you want to collaborate with other working musicians, then you got to explore this stuff. Mm -hmm. you, really do. you might explore it just to say no, I hate it all. I reject it. I am going back to acoustic fine. Yeah. Fine. But if you want to perform online sometime in the next year, and if that is part of your business model to survive until you can be in person, then it is worth knowing how to do this stuff. So um, clean feed is a way to very quickly upgrade your audio. It is a, it can be a free program. You can also have um, a subscription version, which I think gives you just a few more capabilities. Uh, but all of these are kind of in the realm of what podcasters would use or what mm -hmm. broadcasters would use if they're trying to talk to somebody nationwide and get a really good signal, right? And that's not what Zoom is built for. So um, a, a lot of this technology has already been here. It's mm -hmm. just that we haven't really used it as private you know, musicians for our own benefit. Mm -hmm. But we absolutely can. And a, a lot of these uh, programs, I'm thinking of Source Elements Meet, Source Connect, Clean Feed are the three that come to mind. A lot of them are offering major discounts on using their stuff because mm -hmm. they understand this is a critical time. And of course they want to hook you and make you happy, but let them yeah, try out their stuff. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other programs you can use to actually pull audio from different places um, on your computer in order to kind of aggregate it in one place if you're trying to record a bunch of different people. Mm -hmm. uh, so I use a program called Loopback and another one called Audio Hijack. So that way, if I have a singer online uh, that's in one program and I'm trying to sing in my space, but I'm trying to get the two of us together to prove that we did it, um, because that's you've got to prove the miracle. Uh, I use those programs in order to make sure that gets captured and it captures it um, in excellent quality. Oh, that's so cool. 
Uh, speaking of that, gosh, I'm going to have to hit you up again because for a while now I have been um, working and experimenting in OBS and want to incorporate that um, into this program that I'm doing here. I want to make it look a lot fancier because why not? <laughs> the only thing that I have not been able to figure out is the audio. Um, because we are doing it, um, we're going from uh, Facebook to OBS to, or I'm sorry, we're going from Zoom to OBS to Facebook. And so the audio um, configuration gets a, a little muddled. So I know there has to be this aggregated audio setting, which um, has up until this point really baffled me. So I will I think have you to ask call. you about yeah. that. Yeah, there there are so many, and this is all consumer level stuff. I, mm -hmm. I'm not an expert; I'm just a user. Uh, but I think Audio Hijack used to be called Soundflower, so it's a stable technology. It's been around for a long time. It is Mac based. There mm -hmm. is an equivalent for PC users as well for all of this stuff. Yes, I'm a Mac girl, but there are equivalents for PC. There mm -hmm. absolutely are. You may have to hunt a little more. You need to be on. Uh, forms for this uh, you know use your favorite social media to do it if you're a reddit person go on to reddit um, or get on a facebook group get somewhere where you can ask these questions and it's okay if you know the question's been asked 20,000 times since march 13th you get to ask it it's okay to ask it somebody will tell you right they mm -hmm. will help you along and help you through it uh, but it, it's worth doing mm -hmm. so uh, yeah i think that what you're doing now, Danielle, is so good. And you're, you're talking to other singers about how they're experiencing this time. Uh, it's a very emotional time. I think it's a very creative time. Mm -hmm. And just not in the way we expected, right? Just yes. not in the way we expected. But I think we will come out of this when we can actually be together again. It's going to be such a joyful time. I hope we party for a year. Yeah. Right? Oh, I can't wait. I hope we- It'll be 1999 all over again. <laughs> I hope we close the <laughs> street and just have this huge, giant, you know, street potluck because it's safe. Uh, that That's my dream, right? Yeah. I get yeah. tears to think about it. But until then, right, yeah. we keep these connections going. And in a weird way, I hope to get to meet a lot of these people that I have now met and worked with online, right? Mm -hmm. I want to meet them in person and be able to hug them and just sit down and talk with them and, and thank them for yeah. all the knowledge that they've shared with me. Uh, so I, I'm actually really energized that I get to collaborate with all these people. And it's really fun for me to get to sit here and play for people who are professional musicians. And mm -hmm. they really love that I can do it. And I love that I can do it with them. Yeah. So yeah. fun. So I would have missed out on that if I had just said, oh, well, okay. Yeah. I would have missed out on so much. Yeah. I'll just wait till this passes. Yeah. Don't wait. It's mm -hmm. happening. And it's not as, as difficult as you think it is. Mm -hmm. So there are plenty of people for whom, you know, they don't have a fancy mic and they don't have a really fast computer or the mm -hmm. internet in their town is not that good. So, you know, what can you do in that situation? You will do the best you can, you know, with what you have. We have all been doing that the best we can with what we have. Uh, but I think some of the purpose of this technology is so that we don't do things the way we have done them. Mm-hmm right? I, that's you. That's me. Yes. So my students are making albums because that's what's available. If I really could, I would make a student version of Moulin Rouge <laughs> or, or something like that. That's where, that's where we're heading. Actually. Yeah. And I have several students who are now embarking on year long projects. So, uh, and they are going to fulfill dreams that they have had for a long time because there's not a lot of other distractions right now. Mm -hmm. So they're going deeper into what they want to do, deeper into creativity and finally getting the courage to do the things they have said, I always wondered if. Mm -hmm. So they're going to give themselves the gift of this year because they don't have some of those other distractions. Um, and it's not going to take a lot of technology, but it really takes is time yeah. and willingness Yes. Right? The things they want to do, they don't want to build rockets. They want to sing in front of a band. They want to be the star of a show. They want to have something that's written that plays exactly to their strengths. I don't need a lot of technology for that. Mm -hmm. They need somebody who will listen to them and somebody who will take the time to help support them as they pursue their dreams. And that's all of us. Right? Yeah. That's all of us. So you don't need to have a lot of technology in order to make that happen. If you mm -hmm. do have the technology, then you can manipulate it and exploit it 
if I didn't have access to doing low latency or high fidelity, then I would focus on becoming an auteur wherever you are <laughs> and becoming, um, uh, who would it be? Spielberg? Spielberg didn't make any music musicals. Rob Campbell, the guy who did uh, Chicago, right? I would focus on that. Mm -hmm. I would focus on doing really good stuff and take the time component out of it. Yeah. You know, I would film, you know, two chords every day and make a video that lasts for two months or something. <laughs> um, so, yeah. and, you know, sign it, line it up or something. But work with what you have. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have the ability to do this immediate stuff, then play up the fact that you're not immediate and that you can do things where you can take that greater amount of time. Mm -hmm. Andrew Wyeth made all these paintings, right, of Helga, and they were all in secret. He didn't tell anybody he was doing them, right? And then in the 80s, all of a sudden, he showed up with this huge collection of fantastic portraiture and said, when did you have the time to do it? When did you do it? He said, I just did it. Yeah. When you weren't looking. There's plenty <laughs> of time for us when we're not looking to, yeah. to do everything we want to do as artists. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's such beautiful encouragement. I love that you're, you're telling us to go with that feeling that we get inside of like, gosh, I've, I've kind of always wanted to try this. It's so totally different from what I've been doing, you know, for the past couple of years, and it's a totally different direction than I thought. Um, but if there's ever going to be a time in the history of your life, now is the time to do it. I mean, you know, we're all desiring to go back to normal. Um, I don't think anyone amongst us wouldn't want to just you know, have have that light switch flicked right now, and we all go back to normal. Um, I, I for one, for sure, cannot wait to be, you know, back together with my band and performing. Um, but I think what I've really come to accept is uh, that desire has not gone away, that fire is going to continue to burn inside of me. But what I do realize is there are just so many elements at play that are completely out of my control. Um, there isn't a thing in the world that I can do uh, to make this different other than obviously doing my part, you know, in this, in this, uh, you know, helping the world. Um, but the thing that has kept me going and has kept me inspired is listening to those small voices that are whispering to me like like wouldn't it be a cool idea to you know try this or remember when you thought about doing this or that um and i've just given myself permission to run with those things and like you said I don't know how to do all of these things. I, I am, um, I'll drop a hint bomb towards the end here about something that I've, I've had, I have in the works now, which is something I've never attempted before, but I'm just thrilled about it. Um, but just keeping your eyes open to those little clues that are all around you, um, as far as, you know, getting going with technology, you know, a thought will come to mind of like, gosh, you know, I know this person that is pretty savvy in these things. Maybe if I just called them, I could get a little bit of information out of them or going to YouTube, looking anything up, but just don't, don't put roadblocks in front of yourself to pursue these things. Just give yourself the permission to explore other creative um, avenues. And it's just, it's, it's limitless, you know, what we can do right now. Um, what are you seeing? What are you seeing in your studio or in your, um, I don't know, in your associations with um, other teaching professionals? What do you want them to know? What do you want to encourage them to do? <sighs> Breathe, right? It's going to be okay uh, for all I'm an independent studio teacher, but I used to be in colleges. And so for all of my friends who are in academic situations right now, this is a really tough time. Mm -hmm. it, there's so much uh, unknown and so much fear, justifiable fear about what's going to happen. And you're trying to manage so many emotions at once just in yourself, let alone in your students and their families. And so I really feel for you. And it's take it one hour at a time, right? And you can only manage what you can manage. Um, I hope you feel so much grace from everybody else around you mm -hmm. that I know how hard this is. 
and I'm not doing it uh, because I think that that's heroic what they're doing right now, uh, especially the f- friends of mine who are teaching music. Mm-hmm. So everything that we did in an emergency way in March, now we have to do by choice and we have to make it as good as we can for as long as we can. Mm-hmm. And that's really, really hard. And I see such creativity. So I think the message is, I see you. And it's going to be all right. And I, and I say that for my uh, you know, professional friends as well. I see them. And I see them trying so hard. And I want to help so much. Mm-hmm. I can help you make it a little bit better, which will make it more bearable for you over the next period of months. And it will unlock other opportunities for you. Each mm-hmm. time you learn a new piece of this technology, even a little, even if you reject it, you learn something about what's going on. And then if you happen to use it, then you have another tool in your toolbox that you never would have had if you had been doing things just the way you did them in February 2020. Mm-hmm. So I do think all of us will come out of this with just a greater understanding, an appreciation of what technology can do for us and what it cannot, and how to use it to make us more human um, and more connected rather than you know, using it for, for ill. And we, we've mm-hmm. seen it been used for ill as well. So, yeah. Uh, and for my students, I, pro- I press that message as well. I know some of my students are really tired <laughs> and they don't want to, they don't want to do anything that they've been doing since March. They really need a break and they need a relief. And so I try to provide that and, and listen to them and provide that in the best way I can. So for some of them, that's going to be writing about it. For a lot of them, it's going to be writing about it. For some, it's, it's just looking at music differently than they have mm-hmm. and that it's really, it's, it's, we can use those skills in so many ways. So I'm, I'm excited to, to work on music improv with them, which is usually something you only do in person, but it has moved successfully to online. Uh, I'm excited to have a few songwriters who are normally so busy, I can't book them. And they're excited to teach songwriting to my students. Yeah. I, I'm thrilled and honored that they're taking the time. And I hope that's a connection I keep for the rest of my career. So to me, I see, I see a lot of benefits. Uh, Mm -hmm. from this time but I'm also aware that there's a lot of pain there's a lot of anger and fear and so I think technology can begin to help Mm -hmm. it can't solve everything but it can give you some more options if you need them yeah yeah that's I love your perspective and I think that um, sometimes I'm a little concerned about I don't want to mislead anybody with the message that I'm trying to convey in this show. Um, I never want it to come off as I'm, you know, naive and trying to sugarcoat what's happening in the world. I'm absolutely in no way suggesting that this isn't an incredibly, incredibly painful, disappointing, confusing um, time for for all of us, you know. my encouragement would be to sit in that, you know, and let let that happen. Um, but at the end of the day, can you find a way for um, the pain and discomfort of all of this to propel you forward into a, a something else rather than letting it swallow you up? Uh, because, you know, we, we, I'm af- I'm afraid of sitting back and waiting for someone to come save us. We've got to save ourselves. And the only way that you can do that is by doing the things. You can do it while you're sad and you can do it while you're angry and while you're disappointed. Um, but man, a lot of great creativity comes from pain. Ask any great songwriter. <laughs> so true. So yes. true. I mean, I, we're going to have incredible albums, <laughs> right? And incredible stage performances. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I see so many musicians, too, who are continuing to hone their chops as best mm-hmm. they can. They're writing. They're starting to connect more online. I mean, I'm new to Twitch. Oh, my God. Have you, I, have you gone in there? I have. <laughs> I, oh, my God. Uh, I, I, again, I had done that pre-pandemic. And I looked at it a couple of times since then, but that's such a delightfully wacky place. So, Mm -hmm. um, but I so appreciate what they're trying to do. They're trying to connect with people who want to listen to them. And it's a little faster than connecting on some other places. Mm -hmm. So I see, you know, improvers, I've come from the music improv world. So I see improvisers getting on there because it's a faster connection. So that's another potential option. 
So, you know, try one. The worst mm-hmm. that can happen is that you have to take it down and change your domain name. That's the worst that can happen. Right. Um, <laughs> it's not that bad. And, you know, you're going to make a fool of yourself online. We all make fools of ourselves online. It's part of the deal. So go ahead. And yes, it's not the same as a live performance. So don't do a live performance online. Do something else. Mm-hmm. Do um, requests or do a concert for one person. Do the concert in your garage. Um, a local group in Rhode Island is doing concerts in parking garages. They're an eight-person ensemble, and they can safely sing in a parking garage. So they got lighting, and they're filming, and they'll be releasing soon. Wow. I see other ones who are uh, just taking you know, suggestions from their fans, and they're doing Patreons where, yeah, I will sing your song in a month. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's a fantastic thing to do, and that's something you, you wouldn't have the time to do if you were touring all the time. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so you don't have to just do the putting on the camera and saying, here's my Venmo. Mm-hmm. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. Do it. But if you were missing that sense of connection or if you're missing that spark of creativity, like what am I going to do now? There are many, many options for you. Mm-hmm. So ask your people, what do you want? Ask yeah. them, right? So, and if you run out of ideas, contact me. I'll give you a bunch. Yes, definitely. You're a great ideas person. Um, I like that you mentioned Twitch because soon I'm I will have uh, one of my guests will be my bandmate Donovan Hurst, and he has taken to Twitch. He's been on Twitch for a while because he's a big time gamer, um, but obviously he's also a big time singer too. So he has found this beautiful marriage between the two things and he's absolutely blowing up on Twitch. So I'm excited to have him come on and tell everybody, you know, what he's been doing. Um, So we have that to, you know, look forward to. Uh, But it's just, it's a perfect segue into the fact that um, what I have coming up, November 16th, I'm going to be hosting a summit for singers. And this is called the Pandemic Proof Singer Summit. I'm going to bring together the nation's top online speakers that are um, experts in the fields of building your online presence. Um, These are going to be um, some motivational speakers that are specific to our industry and know the needs of singers and have all of these innovative ideas, things that will really open up your mind, but will help you create a pathway for 2021. So that um, as a professional or just as a, you know, big time singing enthusiast, uh, you're you're setting yourself up for any condition, any condition to kind of um, thrive and make music into the future no matter what our circumstances are that come up so i'm really excited i'll be talking more and more and more and more about that as time goes on but save the date november 16th is when it is coming um anything else you want to leave us with eden anything else i want to leave you with can people call you to do some experiments yes i actually offer this as a service yes so it's at EdenCastile.com. You can work with me in half hour segments. So if you want to test out some tech, uh, if you just want to, add, I, I, I test Jam Kazam, I test Soundjack, I test Clean Feed, I test several of those. Most of the time, people, they want to talk through options first. Mm-hmm. And maybe they've gotten the program and I can troubleshoot to some extent as well with you. Uh, but it's really, how am I going to use this tech? And is this the right tech for me to use? Can you help me evaluate between them? The great news is, is a lot of these programs are really low cost or free. They always were. So you can mm-hmm. test a lot of different ones and you may decide that, well, with this group, they all are on Soundjack. That's perfect. But this other one is all Jam Kazam. So I can help you make those evaluations. And I can help talk you through ideas of how to make this tech work for you, work for your musicianship, work for whatever you know, group of people you're working with. So mm-hmm. I love doing that because I want you to succeed. I want you to not only survive this time, I want us all to thrive and come out of this better. And I think the tech can help. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I will, of course, have all of your links posted. And I just want to you know, say to my friends and everybody watching to keep your eyes on Eden, um, follow her social media, 
check out all the amazing things that she's doing. Um, if you're not ready to jump into the tech, I think you'll just find a lot of inspiration in what she's doing. She has um, a, definitely inspired me and I am so glad that we have become friends. I just, I have loved getting to know you and just um, being in your space. And I so appreciate that you would take the time to um, come on tonight and do this with me. And uh, I am so excited for all of the innovative things that you come up with in the future. And I'll be, I'll be sharing all of them. And thank you to everybody that watched. I want to remind you to go to don'tbethatsinger.com and pick up my new digital course that is for singers. It's really, really fun, but it's not just fun. You're going to find a lot of um, insight and tools uh, to use in your professional career that are things that will definitely stand the test of time and that are absolutely relevant to where we're at right now. So I hope you're inspired. I hope you got some great information out of this. And I hope you will share this with all of your singer and musician friends that need a little bit of encouragement. Uh, I will be back here next week with another great guest. And until then, we will say good night. Good night. Thank you so much, Danielle. Thanks, Thanks Eden. So good night, everyone.